Are there time limitations of the law as far as child support obligations go? Well, the child support obligation ends when a child reaches age 18 or graduates with a regular high school class, whichever comes second. Now, parents can agree to extend that support either for college tuition or support in general, but the parents have to agree the court can't award that unilaterally. I see. Financial changes are sure to arise in the years the children are under the parent's custody. Let's discuss other changes which might occur in the arrangements initially made during a divorce. Permanent parenting plans are established at the time of the divorce. Surely, life changes occur which require adjustments to these plans. If a parent or child wants a change in the custody arrangement, can the child be called on to testify about where they should be primarily placed, or can a parent object to a child testifying? In Tennessee, the magic age is 12. A parent can call a child to testify about his or her preference after the child attains the age of 12. Most judges that I know do not want a 12 or 13 year old testifying if it's at all possible because the obvious pressures that it puts the child under. But a child that's more, cl more close to age 18, say 17, 16, and given certain special circumstances or the history between the parties, a judge may consider a more older child's opinion to carry more weight uh, than, than say a 12 or a 13 year old. If a primary custodial parent needs or wants to move, what rights does he or she have to do this? We have a, a Tennessee relocation statute that is fairly complicated, but it is designed to allow a, a custodial parent, a parent that's the primary residential parent, the ability to leave the state for legitimate reasons. And most of the time that people want to leave the state, it's because of a job change or a transfer. And that makes sense but they need to be able to present to the other side in advance notice of the move and allow the other party an option to object. And so we might have a readjustment of the permanent parenting plan. We've had a lot of court cases over the past six or seven years, some where the relocation has been granted, some where the relocation has been denied. It's a very, very difficult topic. So is it possible for one spouse to move out of town and take the child just to spite the other, or is this preventable? It is preventable. One of the reasons why relocation might be denied is that the uh, spouse seeking to leave the state cannot do so for a vindictive reason. Now proving that it's a vindictive reason can be very, very difficult, but in cases that we've seen already in the state of Tennessee, it's possible. Most post-divorce issues involve the inability to collect child support owed by a former spouse. How can custodial parents best handle this challenge? Well, they need to go speak to a lawyer, obviously, and see what can be done about getting a judgment and making sure that there's an arrearage payment that'll help get that uh, uh, arrearage paid over time. But they need to also consider other issues in terms of whether a wage assignment needs to be ordered, whether there needs to be some type of uh, uh, incarceration for contempt. Some, some parents just do not want to pay child support unless they're threatened. Uh, with jail time, they won't pay. Uh, there's other statutes on the books where you can remove somebody's uh, state-issued licenses for failure to pay child support. You can lose your law license, your hunting license, or your driver's license. Also, there's a statute that allows the courts to order people to pick up trash if they're behind on their child support. But finally, one of the most important things that I, that I talk about is interest. The courts will award interest again on the arrearages, and, and at, that interest rate is at 12%, and that can add up tremendously. We've seen and handled many cases where the child support arrearage in excess of $25,000 has had interest in excess of $10,000, $15,000 in those situations. And so the, uh, the, the primary residential parent should be able to collect that money over time, and that child support arrearage is not uh, able to be bankrupted by the obligor parent. So the Cronin Mason Family Law Practice Group handles the immediate needs of the children, demystifies the new child support guidelines and custody arrangements, 
and can help make sense of many post-divorce issues related to support and custody. Miles, thank you for your time with me today in discussing these matters.